Today has been one of the most exciting yet boring days we have had in a very long time with no clear market direction. Now, we heard from Fed Jerome Powell as well as essentially the Fed Jerome Powell of Europe, which is ECB's Lagarde. And they had some interesting things to say, which we will talk about exactly what was said here in this video, as well as talk about the final Q1 numbers for GDP. Yes, it came in worse than expected. Also, we do have some major data that comes out tomorrow, which could move the markets in a big way. So we are going to dive into all of this key information and much more here in this video. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you guys find value out of this video. Thank you guys for watching and let's get straight into it so first things first SP is pretty flat on the day it's up 0.05 percent but we have had some very big candles today look at this one candle a third of a percent and then some of these green candles being a quarter of a percent some very big up and down moves but there was no clear market direction and why is that well because nothing really changed yes we heard from ecb's lagarde we also heard from fed jerome powell at about nine o'clock this morning they went on for uh, about 90 minutes about an hour and a half and were asked questions about how they see inflation playing out how they see the economy playing out and a lot of other things right not just those two things but th that's what the markets really care about and we got no new information no new guidance as far as policy what they plan to do fed jerome powell basically said the same thing that we have heard this whole entire time which the american economy is well positioned to withstand rate hikes and that they do not expect a recession you even had a fed speaker today came out and said that they would do 75 basis points at the next meeting if the situation looks exactly like it does uh now by july 27th and that was fed daily 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 that came out and essentially said that so that wasn't good and that was in pre-market it did help to send the stock market down for a bit and that's what helped really bring us down in the beginning of trading and then we bounced straight back up straight down straight up straight back down and now we're starting to head down in the last 20 minutes or so of trading into the close so we didn't get any new information from fed jerome powell but this says Powell vows to prevent inflation from taking hold in the U.S. for the long run. Essentially, same thing that we have heard for months now. And this market is really categorized by data. And something interesting you are also seeing is the Russell 2000 down 1.33% today. The VIX actually down as well. The NASDAQ and the S&P down roughly about a tenth of a percent dow jones up 0.23 percent i find this russell 2000 move very interesting because this is the last week of q2 so what hedge funds are doing is they're going out and rebalancing their portfolios and it looks like they are still shorting the russell 2000 which historically is the is the cheapest it has been on an earnings basis on a pe basis ever in the history of the russell so I find that quite interesting and that does highlight to me at least there is a lot of fear still left in the markets and a lot of potential downside left in the markets in my personal opinion. Now, if we do take a look at the data and what actually came out today, you got the final readings for Q1 GDP and guess what they came in at? negative 1.6 percent we were expecting a negative 1.5 percent print like we got during the last estimate it actually came out a little bit worse than 1.5 percent the markets kind of shrugged it off when it came out you've seen a little move down in pre-market but nothing substantial why because it's bad it just got a little bit worse but we already knew it was going to be bad here you have it fed chair powell and president lagarde they both did speak nothing too crazy like i said came out of that nothing to drive the markets one way or the other but tomorrow you do have personal income month over month personal spending month over month and i do think that's going to be the important one is personal spending are people still going out and spending money if they are not or not as call it aggressively as they were not going out and spending a lot of money then that is going to help tip us into a 
recession. At the same time, tomorrow morning, 8.30 in the morning, you have PC price index month over month and year over year. That is the uh, reading of inflation the Fed likes the most, and that's really what they like to pay attention to to help them gauge what to do with their policies. We are expecting this to go up about 0 0.2 percent month over month pc price index year over year expected to come in at about 6.3 percent the last reading we got was 6.7 percent so if we come in higher than 6.3 percent or 0.2 percent month over month that's not going to be a good thing and commodities did start to come down in june but it wasn't until the end of june and and this is really for may don't let me get too ahead of myself. This is for May. Commodities were still high, so I do still expect a pretty bad PCE print, as well as pretty bad personal spending rates as well. So that's going to be the big thing that dictates how the markets are going to trade. But if we look at the S&P on the daily candlestick chart, we are in a downtrend. Like this is a firm, a firm downtrend. Not like the stock a firm, but a firm downtrend. You guys can go ahead and put your little channels up here and i mean you're you're in a textbook downtrend we didn't come up you know break out past the prior highs we've seen in the beginning of june around 415 on the s p we only came up to hit about 394 at the peak on the s p that was just earlier in the day today and we are starting to come back down so it looks like we could retest that 360 range if we do get bad inflation data and that's what the markets are really going to sell off on or potentially rally on is going to be that inflation data it's going to be what the fed says it's going to be signs of a recession or not a recession in the form of data and that is what is really moving the markets right here and right now it's nothing else besides data so when there's no data that comes out you can expect to see a pretty docile day but when you have fed speakers and data that is fundamentally important to the markets that's when the markets are going to react very positively or very negatively but we do need a move to the downside we do need a flush out to ultimately hit a bottom and then start to make that slow stair step back to the upside i will say earnings start here very very shortly and you do have a couple companies this week like micron a, a couple other chip makers as well and that will be important that'll give us a gauge into consumer sentiment but once you start to get the app the Microsofts, the Googles, the Teslas, that's where we could potentially see an earnings recession. And the last thing to actually come down is expectations for company earnings. The expectations for company earnings are still at record levels. So even though there's all of this bad news, all of these bad signs about the consumer, about a recession, negative GDP, well, analysts have not lessened their earnings price target so once that is forced to come down once you see companies coming out that cannot meet earnings which i believe will be in this quarter then that's where you could potentially overshoot to the downside in a big way because even if you look at the margin debt you are one bad three to five percent down day away from a full-on market collapse in my personal opinion the nasdaq is still down almost 30 percent year to date and if we take a look at the margin debt 829 billion dollars of margin debt as of january 2022 as of may 2022 the margin debt was sitting at about 753 billion dollars so the margin debt has only went down about 76 billion dollars as of may at the same time the nasdaq is down 30 percent that means margin calls are very close and if earnings come in bad and people have to really readjust their earnings expectations that's where you could see a lot of margin calls right and that's where you could see us overshoot in a big way to the downside at the same time you are seeing some interesting things happening in crypto three arrows capital did just declare essentially bankruptcy they're getting liquidated this is the main headline here on cnbc it says quote crypto hedge fund three arrows capital plunges into liquidation as market crash takes a toll the key points major cryptocurrency hedge fund three arrows capital has fallen into liquidation a person with knowledge of the matter told cnbc Tenio 
I think that's how you say it. Teniu restructuring has been brought on board in the last few days to deal with the liquidation process. A slump in digital currency prices, which has seen billions of dollars wiped off the market in recent weeks, has hurt three arrows capital and exposed a liquidity crisis at the company. So it's unclear how deep this problem runs. If one hedge fund is having these kind of problems, it's going to feed into other hedge funds. And that's also going to feed into equity markets and get us closer to to actually seeing those margin calls get us closer to seeing that big flush out event like kevin o'leary says he wants to see a 10 percent down day in the dow he wants to see a 3,000 point down day in the dow to mark that bottom when some hedge fund goes bankrupt or some large business he says it's coming that's where you get the bottom and i do 100 percent agree with that the best bottoms in history have come or i should say came when people uh, are very fearful when you see bankruptcies, when you're just in an overall bad place, which we are right now, but you're not seeing bankruptcies, you're not seeing earnings come in bad, you're not getting a big reason to sell off stocks. Now, I do want to switch gears here just for a moment because AMC stock is up about 3% on the day. The cost of borrow rate also going up sharply today at 41.40%. 5%. The cost of our average sitting at 30.49%, as well as the cost of our minimum sitting at about 14%. We can see the available amount of shares to um, let, you know, short sellers take out essentially lend out is at zero right now we were at 200,000 for a majority of the day at almost a 24 percent cost to borrow rate so this cost to borrow rate that we are seeing right here and this is interactive brokers short share availability you can see that that cost to borrow rate is getting higher and higher by the minute so it's it's kind of incredible to see people actually taking hundreds of thousands of shares out on loan for a 24 percent interest rate there's an obvious reason why people are doing that and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to be 100 percent honest with you guys it doesn't look like amc is probably going to see a you know 20 30 percent drop from here at least from my perspective now the dollar amount that is currently sold short of amc stock is 1.44 billion dollars estimated short interest of free float 20 0.83% free flow out on loan 35.05% shares out on loan 180.71 million days to cover sitting at 3.65 cost to borrow it says right here at 16.7% 100% share utilization as well so looking pretty damn good there in my personal opinion now if we look at the option activity eight orders totaling almost $700,000 positive order value of 9 percent so not looking all too bullish at all but the price of the stock is still up about two and a half percent heading into the close right here and right now an interesting option activity or interesting option order i should say that i am seeing right now is a january 19th 2024 fifth uh 45 dollar call so i think that's very interesting because it's so far out the money we're not even at 14 dollars right now but some hedge funds are willing to bet the amc is going to go to 45 dollars by 2024 that is definitely a trade for the moas and that's pretty much it if we look at the option activity still a very large amount of calls that are out of the money for this friday 124,000, 33,000 calls that are currently in the money for this friday but if we take a look to july 15th about 29,000 calls that are currently in the money 446,000 calls that are currently out of the money with 86,000 puts that are currently in the money as well for july 15th so there's a lot of potential buying power sitting on the sidelines just waiting to go in and buy some shares of amc stock the market makers those are the guys that are going to have to go out and buy a lot of shares and essentially de-hedge a lot of their short positions they have on the markets due to all of the option activity max pain on amc stock by the end of this week is 13 dollars per share as 
well. So that is pretty much going to be all for this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys found value out of the video. Get your free stock with Weeble, Moomoo, and Public down below in the description. And if you guys want to come trade with me live in real time, link down below in the description of this video as well. You guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.